Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the 411 Talk Zone Radio Show right here on YouTube. My name is Leon Jones, and this evening I'm going to do another pre recorded video. Now, if you check in my community tab, I'm either going to tell you that I'm going to do a pre record or a live stream. Now, today I decided to do a, another pre record because now, this has been on my mind, but a lot of people don't talk about it. Generally, we talk about health. We talk about psychology. At least I talk about psychology. However, one thing that we never talk about and what connects everything to psychology and health effects is stress. So tonight's video, I'm going to talk about stress. Beware of the silent killer known as stress. Beware of the silent killer known as stress. Now, most of us don't even know we have stress. But what causes stress? Well, worry causes stress. And what can you get from worrying? Worrying can lead to overeating. It could lead to fatigue. It could lead to a lack of sleep. It could lead to depression. And see, what's unique about stress, it could affect you physically, psychologically, and emotionally. Because stress causes a lot of things to happen. You can get heart attacks. You can get strokes. You can get high blood pressure. Now, of course, there are ways you can manage stress. But the reason why stress is the number one killer is because many of us don't know about stress. But we know when we have stress. And there are a lot of things that do cause stress. And numero uno, you have to look at what type of lifestyle you're living. Who are you associated with? Are you at odds with family members? Your boss? Your spouse? Any one of those issues can cause stress. Do you have high blood pressure? Are you bipolar? Have you had a stroke? Do you have diabetes? That could cause stress. When you're exercising, how often do you pull muscles? Because you could be doing too much exercise. Now, there's nothing wrong with a little stress on your body to challenge your body because you have to do that. But again, too much of anything is not good. But when it comes to stress, the reason why it is a silent killer, because it comes from a list of items. Are you sleeping? Are you making money? Did you get laid off from your job? Did you drop out of school? There are all types of reasons, and they're valid reasons, why we have stress. And many of us don't know how to cope with stress. But stress is a silent killer because it leads to a number of health effects. It can have behavior swings or mood swings. When it comes to your body, you can gain a lot of weight. You can even lose weight and become anorexic. Look what happened to Karen Carpenter, the singer for the Carpenters. She was only 32 back in 1983 when she passed away. Stress. Stress can lead to diabetes and strokes. Look what happened to Luther Bandros and Barry White. Now, again, when it comes to stress, there are ways you can manage stress. And one way I would manage it is slow your life down. 
you know, I see a lot of individuals, and I've done it myself, we get in a hurry. And when we're in a hurry, we always miss something. And one area that we always get in a hurry is when we leave out of the house and go to work. Now, how do you remedy that? Well, if you know you have to be at work at 8 o'clock, what time do you get up? Well, if you get up at 7 o'clock, depending on how far your job is from you, you might not make it by 8. So what about getting up a half an hour or 45 minutes earlier? Especially if you have to drive in traffic. That can relieve stress. Or what about going to work using an alternate route? That can relieve stress. What about dealing with people? Because people are always part of stress. I mean, you have family members are constantly asking you for something. Your friends are constantly calling you about their problems. You have problems at work. What, you, what would you do at work if you continue to have problems? If you talk to individuals till they're blue in the face at work, what is your Last step, leave the job. And one remedy is if you are in the workforce, if you have a job right now, you want to relieve stress while you're working, put other applications out, get other interviews, because you don't know when the day is going to come where the hammer is going to drop or you're going to be fired. I mean, it's not like the coaching carousel of sports. You know, coaches get fired every day. But they end up finding other jobs, even if they weren't good. Now, sometimes I'm going to go back to the workforce. That job that you have may not be a good job. You might get paid really well. However, it's the environment that can stress you out. And what I'm giving you is the common sense way of dealing with stress. So when it comes to stress, there are ways to manage it. But remember, as with any psychological issue, there are a lot of other issues that can stem from it. I'm talking about stress now. You get high blood pressure, you get overeating, fatigue, insomnia, you get mood swings. And when you drive somebody to the brink that they're going to snap, the person that's going to snap is not really thinking. Why? Because they've been driven to the limit. They are stressed out, and people do get stressed out. But the main importance when it comes to stress, look at your lifestyle and your environment. Those are the two areas you should start to focus on. Are you moving too fast? I know when I get impatient, this is why I learned to slow down, I would forget something. I'm not as detail-oriented. And then when I'm rushing, I don't do a good job. And what happens, I'm doing a job over again. It's a waste of time. That's going to stress you out because you have to keep reworking yourself. And eventually, you're going to overwork yourself, and you're going to get stressed out. Many of us in today's society, we're trying to do a lot of things at once. And we forget that we have limitations. We're not robots. We're human beings. You see a robot, that can only do what you program it to do. But humans, we don't work like that. We're flesh and we're bones. In fact, the body is a big chemical itself. Body has to be nourished. It has to have fluid. The body 
has to be in pretty good shape if it wants to function properly. Again, a robot, robot works based on how we program. Now, there are a lot of us who are stressed by the news that we hear every day. News is always bad. This is why a number of us, we turn to entertainment to make us laugh. In fact, you can relieve a lot of stress by watching some of the information that you hear on YouTube. I think YouTube is very entertaining, to be honest with you. If you're talking about a free stress reliever, watch Black YouTube. You see how much drama you run into. A lot of that is funny. But it's funny when I'm watching it. However, you don't know what individuals are going through. Because on YouTube, we present ourselves much differently than we would in real life. Because nobody could see what our lives are like. Because we don't display that behavior. But well, some people do display that behavior. But a lot of times, we hide. And another area of stress is education. Parents drive us to get all A's. Sometimes it's not feasible because of the instructor. I know I went to college and there were some instructors who knew how to teach courses and some who didn't. So you're not going to necessarily get the grade that your parents want you to get. Unless you take the course over again and find another instructor. By that time, you've wasted money on a three-credit class that you've already passed. And sometimes it stresses us out, stresses us out by living to other people's expectations. That's the problem. You can't do that. You're your own person. You have to navigate yourself through life. And then also getting into other people's problems or having other people pull you into their, their problems. That's stress. That's going to affect you physically, emotionally, and psychologically. Because now you're involved with something you shouldn't be involved in. And that's dealing with somebody else's issues. Now, it's human nature to want to help, but you don't want to get yourself in a situation that you're going to be stressed out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to talk about why stress is a silent killer. Now, again, as we deal with stress, stress is something that exists all around us. It is rare, and it, 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 it's a rare and talented person that can figure out how to avoid it. But to live in optimal health in today's world, the majority of us must learn to manage stress properly. Why? Because it is not just something that you can set aside and ignore, because stress is a silent killer. Why is it a silent killer? Because it will creep up on you slowly maybe unknowingly, and it will destroy what's good in your life. So what I'm telling you again, just like I explained, stress is not does not discriminate. It'll hit all of us, regardless of race, age, religion. It's going to creep, and we have to be ready to combat it. Now, again, stress will creep up on you slowly, maybe even unknowingly, and destroy what's good in your life. So it's not always the big things that can affect you, such as work, finances, and relationships. Stress affects the body both internally and externally, as well as mentally and physically. Stress attacks every cell in the body, so you have to learn the signs and save your life. So the question is, why is stress a silent killer? Well, again, not only is stress a silent killer, but it can 
also be a strategic killer. Why? Because it can deliberate and hurt you in many ways because it increases the level of cortisol. Again, stress increases the level of cortisol. And that's the main stress hormone that interferes with memory, learning, lower immune function, decreased bone density, and increasing blood pressure, cholesterol, and of course, heart disease. Now, I just mentioned heart disease earlier and blood pressure. And these are health effects that can put you to sleep, rest in peace forever. Now, the bottom line is stress is chronic. It's hazardous to your health. So you must beware. It could lead to premature death from many related health problems. Again, when I explain to you about how psychology works, stress is at the top. All the other health problems that you have, they can come from stress. Again, stress is a silent killer for everyone. It does not discriminate. But the people who are able to manage their stress are three times likely to die from stress-induced ailments. Again, people who are able to manage their stress are three times less likely to die from stress-induced ailments than those who perceive their daily lives to be overwhelming and stressful. Now, what does this tell us? What this tells us, it's not the actual stress that kills us, it's our perception of it, and our best bet to a healthy lifestyle is to incorporate stress-reducing habits into our daily regimens. Let me give you an example of that. I just mentioned it. Okay, what is causing the stress? Let's start off with people in your life. Well, if you have people in your life who are filled with drama, and you don't want that drama from other people to come into your life, what do you do? You got to cut those people off. Let them solve their own dramas. And don't get into anybody else's issues. Don't try to be the savior. Because it's not going to work best for you. Now, I'm going to say this. One person might find sitting in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic horrific. Why? Because they become frantic and worried that they will not arrive to their destination on time. And what happens when that occurs? Well, anxiety can and will set in quickly and the body reacts to the stress by releasing an overwhelming and unnecessary amount of harmful cortisol. Now, another person can be in the same line of traffic and view things differently. Why are they viewing something differently? Okay, if I'm sitting in traffic and somebody else is horrific, is feeling horrific, that's because they can't get to their destination on time, like work. But somebody else might be joyride. It's not going to affect them. So it depends on the situation. Now, do any of us like sitting in traffic? Absolutely not. Now, if they are sitting in traffic, they may enjoy listening to music. They can meditate. And they can appreciate the break they've been unexpectedly getting, uh, given. Again, you have some people, if they sit in traffic, they're going to get impatient. It's happened to me. But when you're not in a situation to where you're impatient, you can kick back and enjoy music, appreciate the break, because getting aggravated in traffic once or twice won't cause much damage. But over time, the effects of stress become toxic. Again, if you're in a situation where you're dealing with traffic or you're dealing with bosses at work, and you're dealing with finances and other people like family and friends pushing their problems on you, you might not see it today. But stress is something that can build up over time. And once it builds up, the effects will become toxic because you're building up months, years worth of toxic stress that you haven't even discussed 
or you haven't saw. Now, there's an ongoing study conducted on 6,300 people, and scientists discovered some interesting facts related to stress. Now, since the early 80s, researchers followed the lives of these men and women to accurately assess the stress in their lives and produce data on what they believe to be the reasons to why stress is a silent killer. So what they did, they basically gathered research by creating special surveys with a series of questions that covered a variety of topics, including views on the economic status around the world. And what they discovered is, and this is the information, and a lot of it, you see, came from Caucasian men. So although educated Caucasian men who worked full-time had the highest level of stress in their lives. The study concluded that low socioeconomic status women were found to have the highest level of stress that impacted their health. Now, again, the older a person gets, the less stress they experience. So basically, from the age ages of 20 to 40, stress levels drop significantly. Now, the greatest stressors found in the 30 year study was how individuals viewed the US economic situation. And sadly, most people stressed out, most uh, sadly, the most stressed out people are the ones who have the highest risk of premature death. So, what you need to understand too, and I go back into the body. So, signs that your body might be under too much stress. If you listen closely. Because research has confirmed that there are many symptoms to watch for indicating an overstressed body. Number one, acne. Studies have shown that higher stress levels are associated with acne. Why? Because there are a few reasons why. When people are stressed out, they tend to touch their face more. And when you touch your face and your hands are oily or dirty, you spread bacteria and that basically contributes to the outbreaking of your skin. And also stress causes hormonal shifts and excess oil production that can block your pores. And once your pores are blocked, again, once your pores are blocked, that's when you get acne. Let's talk about headaches, because there have been many studies conducted on stress as a common headache trigger and they have been found to be correlated on many levels. In fact, stress is labeled the second most prominent headache trigger. So one study of 267 individuals, again, there was a sample of 267 individuals who suffered from chronic headaches revealed that stressful events preceded the development of headaches in over 45% of the cases, which is almost half. And another study showed that an increase in the intensity of stress leads to an increased number of headaches experienced per month. So additionally, research collected from 150 military service members found that 67% of the reported headaches were triggered by stress. Now, again, stress can lead to chronic pain as well. We're dealing with the body now. And with chronic pain, what happens? Well, stress and increased levels of stress, hormone, cortisol have been linked to chronic pain. Studies have found higher levels of cortisol in people's hair, which is a good indicator of prolonged stress on the body. And this is why some people's hair turns gray and it falls out as well. That wasn't mentioned here in the article. And then you get illnesses. Stress takes a toll on the immune system by leaving the body susceptible to infections, colds, and illnesses. In a study on how stress affects the immune system, researchers examined 235 adults and placed them in high and low stress groups. So basically over a six-month period, the people in the high stress group experienced 70% more respiratory infections and 61% more sick, day, sick days than the group labeled low stress. Again, over a six-month period, the people in a high-stress group experienced 70% more respiratory functions and 61% more sick days than a group labeled or the group that had low stress. And I just mentioned it earlier, fatigue. 
Where does fatigue come from? Well, prolonged stress. And of course, prolonged stress has been linked to chronic fatigue. And what you get with chronic fatigue is decreased energy levels. Again, fatigue or chronic fatigue, your energy level will be decreased. So in a study of approximately 2,500 people, it was found that fatigue was strongly associated with an increase in stress levels. So basically, if the body feels fatigued and unable to regain energy through normal avenues, it is important to speak to someone about the possibility of adrenal failure and adrenal fatigue syndrome. Again, stress is a silent killer, and with fatigue, symptoms will often go unnoticed and the body begins to shut down before anyone can make an accurate diagnosis. I also mention this, insomnia. So stress has also been shown to disrupt sleep. So one small study linked to high levels of work-related stress with restlessness and the inability to sleep. And there's an additional study of, of 2,300 participants, and that showed a direct correlation between stressful events and increased risk of insomnia. Again, something that will cause you not to sleep will be a past event. Were you in a war that you see somebody get murdered? That presents PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Can you sleep at night? Do you have restless leg syndrome? Anything can cause insomnia. But again, at the top of the food chain is stress. And again, there are many reasons why stress occurs. And when we talk about hormonal change, there are also changes in libido. So many people have experienced a decrease in their sex drive, arousal, and satisfaction when faced with stressful periods. Again, you lose your house, you lose your job. One of your kids is killed or your mother passes, something. You're gonna, you're gonna be fatigued. Your hormonal, your, your hormones will change. Your energy levels are gonna decrease. And then what we call digestive issues. So when you have high levels of stress, they have an impact on a glut, on a gut flora. So high levels of stress have an impact on the gut flora and GI tract with diarrhea and constipation being one of the greatest signs along with IBS. If you listen to my videos earlier, I talked about IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome and IBD, which is inflammatory bowel disease. And something else that's going to happen with stress, you're going to have a change in appetite. And this is extremely common during the times of stress. In a study conducted by college students, 81% reported experiencing an appetite change when stressed out. So 60% of these young adults had an increase in appetite, while 38% had a decrease in depression, like I said before. In a study of 816 women clinically diagnosed with major depression, it was found that the onset of the mental illness was associated with acute and chronic stress. So in a not so dramatic study of 38 individuals who were not chronically depressed, it was found that high levels of stress were associated with depressive episodes. Let's talk about rapid heartbeat because when you're stressed, Heart rate is significantly higher during stressful conditions and also increases blood pressure. I mentioned that early. Heart rate. Your heart rate is significantly higher during stressful conditions and get an increased blood pressure. And guess what happens when your blood pressure increases? Could lead to strokes. So chronic stress is a silent killer when it comes to cardiovascular health and could cause irreversible damage and sweating exposure to stress and its related anxiety has been proven to cause excessive sweating especially in teens and those with 
Palmer hypohydrosis, but also to the general public. So, so basically, what you got to understand about stress is something that almost everyone will encounter at one point in their lives. Even in small, unnoticeable formats, stress is a silent killer and can be detrimental to one's health. Thankfully, there are many signs and symptoms to help recognize stressful conditions. Again, there are many signs and symptoms to help recognize stressful conditions as well as ways to decrease the impact of stress on one's life. So with everything, how do you deal with stress? Again, I'm going to say this, stress is a silent killer, but there are methods of control to help you with stress. For some, it's as easy as exercising 30 minutes a day. Experts saying this could be the magic pill to creating an environment within your body to properly manage stress. Now, for other chronic warriors, it may be a bit more difficult. So they need to find their own personal combination of what form of stress relief works best for them. Now, some of the ways that are recommended for stress combat, combatment or combating stress, let's talk about meditation. By adding meditation into your daily routine, you can take a widely spending mind and train it to take on a more calming and relaxed perspective. Many people, this method can make a big difference. So basically, with today's technology, it's as simple as downloading a phone app and allocating time slots that fit nicely into your calendar for some reciting of mantras or conscious thinking. Then you have adrenal bleeding. Not bleeding, adrenal breathing. Again, that's adrenal breathing. And Adrenal breathing is basically a quick and easy fix when stress strikes and the body begins to feel anxious. So when you have adrenal breathing, it's basically you're dealing with deep breathing. And it can also be helpful, but those who are weak, you have to be very careful because excessive breathing can trigger adrenal crashes. So proper adrenal breathing is a great way to step back physically and psychologically and refocus on the current surroundings. So basically, people who experience stress, their breathing can become rapid and shallow, and it creates more anxiety. So it definitely helps to take deep breaths from the abdomen to slow the stress response and regulate the heartbeat and also avoid alcohol because I know when some people get stressed, they turn to alcohol to eliminate stress when in fact alcohol could have a reverse effect. It disturbs sleep and acts as a depressant. Again, do not use alcohol. In your mind, you might think alcohol is going to be the end-all, cure-all. It might give you that temporary thought in your mind, but one must understand that alcohol can act as a depressant and your sleep will be disturbed. Now, again, stress is a silent killer. So reviewing everything that I said, when a body's natural response to stress becomes impaired, a person can suffer from a stress-induced ailment called adrenal fatigue syndrome. It's known as adrenal fatigue syndrome. Now, this condition can occur when a person's body is so overstressed that adrenals no longer secrete cortisol, which will lead to serious health issues that affect a person's well-being, such as fatigue, fluctuating blood sugar levels, a weakened immune system, anxiety, and depression, amongst many things. And too often, Stress goes unrecognized or it is treated incorrectly, even by the best, or I'm going to say even by conventional physicians. So a more com comprehensive treatment regime can be obtained from healthcare practitioners 
that specialize in adrenal fatigue and adhere to the neural endometabolic model of stress. That's N-E-M. Neuro endometabolic model of stress. And that recognizes all the systems of the body interacting as one to handle stress. So symptoms are followed to discover which underlying system is injured, how it affects others and proper treatment and how proper treatment is then going to be implemented. So again, Stress signs and symptoms are serious and they should never be ignored. So I'm going to say this, insufficient personal care could result in unnecessary suffering and even death. So if you think you may be suffering from stress and adrenal fatigue, it's important to begin a proper treatment to manage your health care and proactively reduce the stress in life. So again, when we deal with stress, why is it a silent killer? Well, the bottom line is it's hazardous to your health. It can lead to premature death from many related health problems like hormonal change, heart disease, higher sugar levels, cholesterol, higher blood pressure, strokes heart disease. That's what you get with stress. That's why it is the silent killer. And when it comes to stress, stress can affect anyone. So the bottom line is you have to ask yourself, how are you going to manage it? And many of us don't know how to manage it. Many of us take it for granted. And with stress, stress, stress is stress, no matter where it comes from, because it's going to affect your body, your hormones, it's going to affect the way you think. And remember what I have told you. Stress leads to other health effects. So the way you control stress is try changing your lifestyle. And changing your lifestyle means if you're on a job, don't worry about the money so much. Look at the environment you're in. If the environment you're in is toxic, you need to leave it or you won't be making that money very long. You'll be digging daisies. Same thing goes for individuals that you are hanging out with. Keep your circle small. Also, get proper sleep. Basically, it's environment and lifestyle. And don't let people influence you either. See, when you let people influence your decisions based on their lives, it's not going to hurt them. It's going to hurt you. This is why I always say be careful who you hang out with. Everybody's not your friend. Uh, one big stress reliever, I would say, is stay off social media. Have so many people putting their business out there on social media. A lot of dysfunction is going on on social media. Get away from the dysfunction. Again, I will say this. Everybody that gives you a friend request or they're your friends on Facebook or Instagram, they're not your friends if you hadn't spent any time or, or met them. You don't even know them. So you can't call everybody your friend. And when it comes to sports, sometimes you're not going to be able to do something from the get-go. takes practice, but practice smart. Again, comes the exercising. Too much of that can be stressful. So when it comes to stress, stress does not discriminate. It'll appear from nowhere when you least expect it. Why? 
because you really expect it to happen. Most of us don't pay attention to it because we go through life like nothing's going to happen. Must understand that life is full of challenges. And you're going to run into a lot of those issues. You have to know how to prevent stress. Now, some people can't handle it, and suicides also occur. Uh, the child support system, if you're a father or even a mother, but particularly if you're a father, that can cause a lot of stress. Again, when you lose your job, when you didn't make valedictorian or honorable, and your parents are upset with you, can't live for other people, number one, because that'll stress you out as well. You got to live for you. You're not other people. You should not be comparing yourself to other people. That's another problem. Again, you have to take care of your life. You only live one time. You have to make the best of it. So when it comes to behaviors, emotions, it comes to your own physical body. Managing stress can take work. But if you know how to meet the challenge head on, it'll be a lot easier for you to manage the stress. If you don't know how to meet the issue head on, that's where the problems occur. And there are going to be times where you don't even know how to handle the problem. You might get some bad information and you have to be aware because just because someone experiences something, it doesn't mean you'll experience something. So what I'm saying is experiences are different. However, when it comes to stress, you have to be able to manage the stress. Again, like I said earlier, stress causes other health effects. And those health effects can kill you. So in the end, I will say this. You live once and you remember, never take stress for granted. Why? Because stress is the silent killer. And that's my commentary for this edition of the 411 Talk Zone Radio Show right here on YouTube. If you like what I just presented, please comment, share, and subscribe. And if you're looking for some STEM content, well, there is a channel out there for the mind of STEM. It's known as the QCIS channel. On that channel, you get a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and of course, math. Now, if you cannot find the 401 Talk Zone radio show or the QCIS channel on YouTube, you can check both of those channels out on Twitter. Now, for the QCIS channel, since it's more educational-based, you can also find that channel on LinkedIn. And in the end, be blessed for what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have. Always know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. And if it doesn't apply, let it fly. But if the shoe fits... Wear it. If you don't like the shoe, change it. Next week, same time, same bat channel. I'll do either a pre record video or a live stream, and we're going to talk more about the psychological issues. We're going to get into some issue, more issues on stress and molestation and the religious institutions. So be there or be square. And you will find out, got to check my community tab if I'm going to do a live stream or a pre-recorded video. But be sure you check out the community tab because I do put it there. And once again, that's my commentary for this edition of the 411 Talk Zone radio show right here on YouTube. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. I want you all to have a wonderful and gracious evening. God bless you. I'm out.